It is my joy to welcome you to today's podcast. Our prayer is that the Lord will minister to you in a special way during our time together. We're doing a series on family, and this is part two. We had a fantastic uh, marriage seminar. 65 couples were here, and they were really blessed. And I want to take this time to say thank you for so many that have sent birthday wishes and notes. I know I have not responded. I've been having a little bit of difficulty with my thumb. And uh, <laughs> I just want to say I appreciate it. Thank you for your prayer. And I'm also going to be requesting your prayer. Next month is very, very important for me. I, I will be speaking at the World Congress at Madrid, Spain. And I'm going to ask you to pray because already I'm feeling... All right, please help me. Pray with me for this. I heard this man that just landed on a Singapore flight and decided to purchase a mask when he landed at the airport because of the coronavirus scare. So he went to the store, picked up a mask, and he was shocked to read what he, uh, the note inside, it says, made in China. A woman went shopping, and at the cash counter, she opened her purse to pay. The cashier noticed a TV remote in her purse. He could not control his curiosity, and he asked, do you always carry a TV remote in your purse? <laughs> she said, no, not always. But my husband refused to accompany me today uh, for shopping because of the football match. And so I took the remote and I came. The cashier laughed. He started billing. And after some time, he returned the things. He said, madam, we can't process this. He says, why? Because your husband has blocked your credit card. Well, the wife was not going to be beaten. She opened her bag, took her husband's credit card. She says, okay, now you can take this one. Swipe it. And so she, she did, and suddenly says, okay, we need the uh, OTP that is sent to your number. Oh, it's sent to the husband's number. But she was not beaten. He, she also brought her husband's phone number. Phone. So she took the OTP and gave it. She happily purchased everything. You know, he had forgotten to block his own card. Went home, and she went home very happy. When she reached the home, she saw the car is gone, the husband is gone, the house is locked. There was a note outside the house. He says, couldn't find report, remote, so I decided to take, take the boys for the real match. If you want to reach me, call my mobile number. <laughs> I'll be home late. And suddenly she realized, oh no, he's taken the house keys too. My friend, couples that tend to control each other. It's fun when you're married. How many of you have been married for a long, long time? You've been married. How many are having a very great marriage? Let me see your hands. Okay, that's a difficult question. You have to say yes, you know. <laughs> Pasi Yunus Uji is watching you. Come on, lift your hands. Okay. <laughs> just, right, 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 right. I just want to be sure she was watching it, so. <laughs> I'm going to talk this morning about keys, or I would say key ingredients for an incredible marriage. Key ingredients for an incredible marriage. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for marriage. Thank you that you thought of it first. Thank you that you instituted it, Lord, and that you have caused us to enjoy the benefits of marriage. God, we thank you for making us unique Father, we thank you for your presence in every marriage. We ask that you would speak to us today, that this word that is spoken today will minister to so many lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. 1 Peter 3, verse 1 to 7. And I'm going to encourage you to please write down notes as I speak it. And uh, if you are sitting away from your spouse, it would be nice to find your way to your spouse. Okay. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. And when they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from the outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfailing beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way holy women of the past 
who put their hope in God, used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as a weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayer. I want to read verse 7 in the King James. It says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Proverbs 14 verse 1, The wise woman builds her house. Dwell with them according to knowledge. There's so much of knowledge and wisdom required to live a happy life. Some people have miserable marriages. You probably know some people like that. Some have mediocre marriages. And some have magnificent marriages. The, the, the thing is, how do some people have such a great, wonderful, incredibly wonderful marriage? I'm going to tell you, the key is right in your hands. I'm going to share a few keys. The first one, keys to an in- incredibly wonderful marriage. First one, your marriage requires supreme commitment. Your marriage requires supreme commitment. Marriage is the first institution order, ordained of God. It came before the laws. It came before civilization, before the government, before worship, before church, before tabernacle. It is the primary institution of God Almighty. The ultimate authority of marriage does not rest with man or society, but with God. He instituted it, and he has the final word about it. We get to enjoy the institution of marriage. The government or man does not have the final authority. And Jesus said, what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Marriage requires supreme commitment. Can you say that? Supreme commitment. Say that again. You need supreme commitment to enjoy the full benefits it offers. The scripture says, for this reason, the reason of marriage, shall a man leave father and mother, cleave to the wife, and they shall become one flesh. A physical leaving required by the uh, man and an emotional leaving required by the woman. Now, I know it goes contrary to our culture, but the word stays above culture. Can you say amen? It, is, it requires a commitment above parents. It requires a commitment above parents. It requires a commitment above your children. And I want to say this, in our culture, when we have arranged marriages, we bring two st- strangers Great family, great education. You bring them together as husband and wife. They're married. Really, they're strangers. It takes time for them to get emotionally connected. But there are also times you go through the motions of marriage, as in having kids, buying a house, having a job, taking care and education and all of that. But the hearts do not get connected in some cases. I've seen couples... They go through the motion as their heart is never connected. They get excited when Shah Rukh Khan falls in love on the screen. But they are. But then the woman conceives and she, bear, she is carrying a baby. The one person the woman loves is the baby she is carrying. And when she delivers the baby, she is thrilled about the baby. The one person she falls in love is with the baby. And that is why sometimes when the baby grows up and becomes an adult, And when it's time for them to leave home, for the mother, it's more like a funeral service when a son gets married. That is why a mother really insists on the son really bringing the Bahu coming home here. She wants to be with the one she loves. Parents, listen to this. Don't pour all your devotion and love on your child. Start loving your spouse. Wives, love your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Otherwise, when it's time for kids to get married and go, you look at a husband and say, who are you? (laughs) Oh, you're married to me. (laughs) Understand. Raise your kids well so it's not difficult on you 
when it's time for them to leave. A marriage requires a commitment above your business. Gentlemen, your business should not take priority over your marriage. Your marriage should take priority over your business. Don't pour all your energy into your business, into your commitments and deadlines. Your marriage requires a commitment above your friends and siblings. Some, some husbands, after their office, they're off. They've gone to a restaurant. They've gone to some place. They're sitting and talking with friends, childhood friends. But they have a wife waiting home. And then he comes at 11, 11, 30, 12 in the night. She's already gone to sleep. My friends, do not put your friends and other family members or siblings above your marriage. Your marriage takes priority. The second key, put God first. Put God first. When you were a bachelor or a spinster, perhaps you were casual about your Christian faith, your walk. But then when it's time for marriage, you have great matrimonial slogans and, you know, uh, advertisement. Godly man, spiritual man, from good home, uh, born again, baptized, confirmed. Good, five feet, nine inch, well settled. Good Christian boy. Fears the Lord. A week after marriage, you will find out if all that was advertisement gimmick or was it true. The lady will know if that is true or no. You know, friends, after your marriage, your marriage will expose you, will expose who you really are. So really, your marriage is a litmus test of who you really are. And I can tell you one thing. If your husband says that my wife is a spiritual woman, I believe him. If your wife says that my man is a godly man, I believe. If she comes and says, my husband doesn't read the Bible, he doesn't pray, but he has all the good words to say to you, I believe her. It's interesting, when, uh, when uh, young people fall in love, so many times God speaks to them. I have young people fall in love. His pastor, God spoke to me this. God told me this and God told me that. 25 times a day, God is speaking to these people. And it only happens when they're falling in love. And after a long time, after all that God's speaking, suddenly the young people gets married. From the day they are married, God stops speaking to them. <laughs> I don't know what is it, but... So when people come to me and ask, and God told me, I want to know who is he interested in. Friends, this is what I want to say. Once you're married, will you please put God first? It's real life. Get serious with your walk with God. Have your personal quiet time. Walk with God. Read your Bible. Pray. The second thing I want to say is you need to have family devotion. You sit with your children and you teach them God's word. Sing some songs. It's fun in our house. Every evening, 7.38, our boys are playing the keyboard. We have lovely time of presence of God and we, we teach them God's word. Remember, you got to teach them. The scripture says in Deuteronomy, when you sit at home, when you lie down, when you get up, when you walk along the road, teach them. Teach the kids. We have a generation where fathers are absent when it comes to word of God. And the kids are learning things on the internet. The internet has more importance than a father in the house. What a sad thing. And I want to say, friends, it's time for us to say, let's put God first in our family. I also want to say this, that as couples, you need to pray. Every day, find a time when you can sit and pray. You can pray for five minutes, ten minutes, but make it a point. You discipline yourself to pray. It's a key for a great marriage. Somebody said their family that prays together stays together. Number three, build trust. The key to any marriage is trust. You can live with your spouse if both of you trust each other. So you ask the question, how can I build trust? Trust is based on communication. Communicating with each other. And communication should be based on truth. Truth develops transparency. 
and transparency brings trust. Okay? Everybody say communication based on truth brings transparency. Transparency develops trust. Are you getting me? In other words, when you're talking to your spouse, never tell a lie. I share this when I, during the wedding, man coming from high tech city, not a Christian, coming home, he's on his way to ECIL, stopped at Panjugudai to the bar to drink. And after a long time, the wife is not seeing him, so she calls, hey, where are you? The man says, oh, I'm, I'm stuck in a traffic jam at Panjaguta. Actually, he's in a bar drinking. So he says, you really? You're in, the, you're in a traffic jam? And she grew suspicious. She says, can you honk the car? Papa. You tell one lie, trust is lifted up. Phone call comes. And the wife says, who is that? Oh, just a colleague from my office. Wrong answer. The colleague has a name, has a gender too. And if it's a lady calling you, young man, and if she's calling you seven times, the office must be on fire. You need to tell clearly what's happening. Communication that's based on truth. Truth brings transparency. In marriage, you know, I, I know couples that keep password from each other. You don't want anybody, the husband to read, wife to read. Password for on Facebook, social media. Password for WhatsApp, password for your phone on your laptop. Everyone is password protected. Your marriage itself is password protected. My friends, how many marriages have passwords because you have a hard time trusting your spouse? There is no truth. There is no transparency. Financial transparency. Transparency regarding relationships, regarding friends, regarding office, regarding salary you earn. When you have transparency, you have trust. Develop trust. You can trust and live with a person when you know here is a person who will not tell a, a lie to me and I can trust this man. Can you say amen? Number four. Number four. Minister to each other's needs. Husbands and wives are made uniquely different on purpose by God. Peter says, live with them according to knowledge. He didn't say live with them according to love, according to money, according to your faith. But he says live with them according to your knowledge. You need to study how, study your spouse. Take time to learn who is this person I'm married to. You're different as male and female. Physically you're different. Emotionally you're different. Psychologically different. And I need to, I'm going to talk about six things now. Please write it down. And we will have a chart that will come after some time. The first need for a husband, most people will say, oh, it is food, or his job, or maybe it is his the need for intimacy. Wrong. The first need for a husband is respect. Can all the ladies say amen? And all the men say amen? The first need for a husband is respect. And how does he interpret respect? How does he see, how does he view respect? Respect means to honor, to cherish, to admire. He interprets respect in the tone of your communication. Ladies, listen to this. You thought he was after something else. He interprets respect in the way you talk to him. There are women, by nature they are angry. They love to scream and yell and shout at the husband. They want things to be done their way. It is their way or the highway. You do it my way or get out from here. Ladies, your greatest asset as a woman is your sweetness. Your gentleness. First Peter chapter 3 says, by your quiet spirit, by your gentle and quiet spirit, you will win over your husband. Don't shout, yell, or scream at your husband, especially in front of your kids, in front of your parents, in front of other people, brothers and sisters, in front of family members, neighbors, friends, colleagues. Don't shout and scream at your husband. <coughs> Be sweet to him. Speak kindly. Speak gently with him. 
Some wives are always trying to control the husband. Don't control. Don't take the TV remote and go somewhere. Do not belittle your husband in front of others. Don't speak ill of him or his work. Don't say, you know, look at him, what kind of job he has. Look at his family. Look at him. Don't belittle him. That's your man. That's your man. Don't belittle his family, his hobbies, his spirituality. Don't say this fellow, he doesn't read the Bible. He doesn't pray. What kind of husband you are? By nagging and belittling him, you're not going to get the best out of him. Cherish him. Speak well of him. Respect him. Ephesians 5 verse 33. And the wife must respect her husband. When you speak well of your spouse, people will respect you. I need to say this. Your children will respect you. Some wives have lost respect from their, from their own children because they are belittling their father, the kid's father's father. Wives need, what is a wife's need? Wife's number one need is not shopping, is not dressing up. Her number one need is love. How does a wife interpret love? It's based on priority. Everybody say priority. Husbands say priority. So the question is, is your wife more important than your job? Is she more important than your friends, your car, your bike? Is she more important than your house? Is she more important than your favorite sport or TV program? Is she more important than your own siblings and parents? She wants to be her husband's number one priority. Listen, friends. She has left her parents, her family, her friends to marry you and to come and live with you. She is willing to even let go her career and her job just for you. She is willing to bear children for you, that will carry your name and your surname. She knows it will damage her perfect figure that she had before the marriage. She will look different after delivery. She is willing to do all of that just because she loves you. She was willing to let go of so many other potential proposals just to marry you. Some of them were better than you. So the question is, will you give her top priority in your life? The Bible says, husbands, love your wife. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, Christ gave top priority for the church, even to the point of giving his life. You know, until she finds herself as a top priority, she doesn't feel truly loved. So keep that in mind. Number two, a husband's need, and if you have a chart, you can show that. You have a chart, or oh, they did, or oh, wonderful, the chart, great. A husband's needs are visual. He is moved by what he sees. He's a visual creature. And listen, ladies, he wants to see you. When you dress up and make yourself beautiful, oh, he goes crazy. Yes, your husband admires you. He is looking at you. So do something special once in a while. When he comes home, dress up nicely. Don't just, you know, you have been sweating and working and all of that. Wear the same thing and, and you know, and say, oh, okay, you come. Make it, make it special. Make it special. Amen? He is looking at you. And when he comes near you, smile at him. Genuine smile, not this one of those. You know, you know, ladies can smile beautifully. We men know that. I don't know if ladies re realize that, but we men know a ladies can smile beautifully. Your smile will brighten your husband's day. Will brighten him when he's all stressed. Smile at him, genuinely, from the heart. A wife, what is her need? Her need is hearing. A wife longs to hear her husband. Husbands, communicate with your wives. Talk to them. 
share words of romance tell her i love you from your heart speak to her words of appreciation tell her good things tell her words of encouragement words of acceptance just tell her hey that dress looks perfect on you great if it doesn't look perfect i'll get you another two more don't be quick to criticize don't criticize her family or her background or her career or her language or her appearance don't belittle her make her feel valued and respected next third a husband is moved by smell we men we love smell that's why we invest in cologne after shave and all of that and we love our wives to smell nice amen when we coming near our wife we don't want to smell her to smell gongura chicken or fried fish and i know you've been working all day but don't don't smell like a fish smell nice you know the power of smell is so great in the old testament we read those two brothers k no esau and jacob you remember esau and jacob esau came from the field and he smelled what jacob was cooking he was cooking lentil soup lentil is dal lentil is dal this guy was making pappu chara <laughs> can you believe that he sold his birthright for something so stupid i mean if there was some chicken or mutton i understand it was but just for a pappu chara he sold his birthright what a si- silly thing but that is a power of a smell power of smell your husband will sell a lot of things if he can just fry the onion when he comes home make his favorite food right at the door he'll fall in love with you amen power of smell but what are the ladies looking for ladies women a wife is moved by touch listen husbands go and hold her hand touch her hug her be nice to her my wife she wants me to hold my hand like this when i go shopping we go to some sh- mall and when we come out and so she holds my hand and we walk from the door of the mall to the car and those 10 15 steps she has gone to cloud 9 <laughs> and you know by the time we come to the car i have to pull her back so she can get into the car there is power wives admire touch by her husband wives look to your husband and say i hope you're listening to him number 4 a husband's need he needs physical intimacy a husband has physical sexual needs as a wife god expects you to take care of that need this is a this is there in the bible in fact the very first thing god commanded man was to be physically intimate in genesis chapter 1 verse 28 god blessed them and said to them be fruitful he didn't say go plant a mango tree he said be intimate and come with children that's the first thing he said in chapter 1 of genesis god created sex with his hands he sanctioned the use of it within the context of marriage and i want to say friends a healthy christian family will have a healthy relationship now in the secular world sex is sinful because they do it before marriage they do it outside of marriage but within the context of marriage god expects you to minister to each other please turn your bible to first corinthians chapter 7 and i'm reading this this is there in your bible my time <clears throat> Now for the matters you wrote about it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman but since sexual immorality is occurring each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband the husband should fulfill his marital duty talking about sexual responsibility to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband the wife does not have authority over her own body ladies did you hear that is it there in your bible if a husband comes near you you're not saying don't touch me hey hey you can't do that 
The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body. Men, you cannot do that to the wife. Either. Don't touch me. You can't do that. But yields it. Do not deprive each other. Don't stay away from each other except by mutual consent and for a time so you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again so Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. It is a need and you need to minister it in the context of your marriage. I also want to say this. As, as husbands, you're obligated to give your wife children. You cannot withhold children from a wife if she's desiring to have kids. There are some husbands who will not give a child. You're married. And wife cannot go to anywhere and say, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. But women will be saved through childbearing. She needs children. I talked about man's need. A woman's need is emotional intimacy. Her needs are predominantly emotional. She likes the holding of hands, going for a walk together, a hug, a kiss, a I love you note, a note under the pillow. A shoulder massage, a long drive, going for a dinner together. All of this is a woman's need. Men, listen to this. These are what women are looking for. Your wife is looking for. And ladies, wives, none of this is what his need is. He is not looking for any of these things. But you are to take care of each other's need. Quickly, number five. Every husband needs his wife to take care of their home. He wants his wife, whether she's working, where she's in a corporate, she's in the business, but when he comes home, he's expecting his wife to be the home minister, to take care. You may have maids, you may have cooks, but you have to be responsible to make sure things are going well in the house. There should be food on the table. Children are taken care of. Managing the maids and basic things of the house to be done. He is to ensure there is money for the needs of the house. And all the ladies say, hello. He is to ensure there is money in the house. Ladies say, amen. I read the story of a stingy husband who refused to send money to the wife. And he sent a note on WhatsApp to the wife. He says, dear sweetheart, I can't send my salary to you this month, but I'm sending you 100 kisses. Your loving hubby. After a few days, the wife responded, Hubby dear, thank you for the hundred kisses. I'm sending you the expense details. The milkman agreed on five kisses for one month's milk. <laughs> the electricity man only agreed after ten kisses. Our house owner is coming every day and taking two kisses instead of the rent. The supermarket owner did not accept kisses only. So I have agreed to prepare him biryani every weekend. So he gets kisses and biryani over the weekend. Please don't worry for me. I still have the balance of 25 kisses. And I hope I can complete this month using the balance. Your cutie pie. Every husband, every wife needs her husband to be the spiritual leader of their home. Nothing upsets a woman more than to find that she has to drag her husband for spiritual matters. Drag him for prayer. Drag him to read the Bible. Drag him to church. She wants her husband to be the leader in the house. Calling for prayer. Teaching God's word. Responsible that he and his family goes to church. That they have family devotion. They serve the Lord as a family. Number six. The way to a husband's heart is through food. Dr. David Grant once said, a hungry man is an angry animal. But a well-fed man is a lamb for the slaughter. Ladies, the way to a husband's heart is through his stomach. Learn to cook his favorite meal. Today we have a generation of women that know how to work in corporate. But when they come for marriage, I ask them, hey, can you cook? They say, yeah, I can cook two-minute noodles. I can boil an egg. You know, two-minute noodle and egg can work in corporate different time. But at home, when you have a full-time husband, he needs proper food. Amen? So learn to cook. The way to a wife's heart is through surprises. Ladies love surprises. Men, pick up a card. Pick up a flower. Order some food home once in a while. You can purchase a sari or a churidar or a lady's handbag 
or a pair of shoes or sandals. I did not know that there are 365 colors of handbags and ladies' shoes. One for every day. Number five, and with this I close. Choose to have a super happy marriage. You have a choice. Your marriage will be as happy as you want it to be. It's in your hands. Plan for memories. Plan for surprises. Plan a date with your mate. Go for dinners together, just the two of you. Don't go as a whole family clan, you know, children, everybody. Just two of you. Go for a midnight biryani. Go for an ice cream, for a long drive, for shopping together. Plan vacations to the beach, to the hill station, to Singapore, to Dubai. Plan special things on birthdays and anniversaries. Your marriage does not have to be like the many unhappy marriages you've seen and heard. The choice to have a great marriage lies with you, my friend, every couple. 21 years ago, my wife and I decided to have a happy marriage. It's been 21 years of beautiful, wonderful marriage. And Pastor Stubbs and his wife have been instrumental in setting an example of a loving marriage. Sister Stubbs, come. I know time is up, but you have some wisdom to share. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fortunately, I've been married long enough that I can share wisdom quickly. Do not lose heart. I won't take long. I brought a nice gift today. You know, when you get married, you get gifts, right? We had newlyweds in the last service. They confirmed that uh, they got married this week, and they had lots of nice gifts. But I, so I brought my box, my beautiful box with me today. And this box actually represents marriage. On your marriage day, what beautiful gift did you get? What is in marriage when you get married? And so we'll open it and we'll see the wonderful things that you get in marriage. Just open it carefully in case anything jumps out. This is shocking. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Did I forget? <laughs> I do sometimes, but not today. Because the truth of the matter is, on your marriage day, don't believe the myth that you will receive a, a nice wrapped package with everything in it that you've been longing for. Companionship, romance, sexual fulfillment, friendship. It doesn't come in a marriage box. It doesn't come with signing a marriage register. The reason is, on your wedding day, you received just this, an empty box. The only thing that will come into your marriage is what you put in the box. This is the problem with so many marriages. They can't take out, take out, take out, and they never put in. It's not fair if one spouse puts in and puts in. Why should your wife put in and put in? Why should you only take out? Why should your husband put in and put in and put in and you only take out? Both of you have to put into your beautiful box what you want to have in your marriage. And I'm, I'm not going to go through it all again, guys, because Pastor Volson said it all. You know what? Love does not come in marriage. Love comes in people. People put it in marriage. If you want love in the box, you put love in the box. If you want Jesus in your marriage, you put Jesus in your marriage. You initiate family devotions. You call your wife and your family to prayer. If you want to have fun in your marriage, if you want to enjoy life, food is important. Truly it is. You have to put it in marriage. Not the swiggy guy like they said. You have have to put it in there. And if you, all of the things, have a good time. You don't have to go to Dubai, Pastor Bolson. It's a nice place. You can go to Bimavaram. You know, there are places that closer to home. See what I, you know, have a, put some fun in the box, okay? You know, put good thing, put kindness in your box. Put courtesy. I love courtesy. Politeness. See, you know what happens when a husband opens the car door? It means one of two things. Either the wife is new or the car is new. <laughs> After that, anything goes. Have you ever watched men walk here in India? They go like this. 
and the wife is 10 paces behind. <laughs> I, yeah, I've seen that. I'm just saying, walk with your wife, open the door, you'll faint, you'll have to pick her up. But that's okay, She'll get, she will love getting used to it. She will love it. Kindness, kindness. Be kind one to another. You know, God wants to bless your marriages. Really, truly, he does. But you have to cooperate. You can't. You know what happens if you take and you never put in? Your marriage is going to go bankrupt. You know what happens, happens to bankrupt marriages? They end up in divorce. Because there's nothing put in the box. You, just as Pastor Cook said, you can make your marriage as wonderful as you want. It's up to you. It depends on what you put in the box. May God bless you, and may God bless your marriage as you, day by day, put in the things that will bring joy, will bring peace, will bring love and happiness. And I know that he will bless you. Let's stand up together, shall we? I'm going to pray and ask God to bless your marriage. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for the word today. We thank you because you have plans for our marriages, plans for good, plans for harmony, plans for peace, plans for contentment, plans for fulfillment, plans for joy. And I just pray over our couples today, in the name of Jesus, that you would give them the maturity, that you would give them the desire, that you would give them the uh, ability to put things into their marriage that will bring a harvest of joy into their homes, into their families, for their relationship, for their children. And it, the, the, the love and the happiness will overflow from their home to their family, to their friends. Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus, the blessing of God upon our couples. We thank you for what you will do in our homes, work in our hearts. Lord, take away hardness of heart. Take away unforgiveness. Take away selfishness and give us love one for another. Help us to be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Just as for Christ's sake, God forgave us. We thank you. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for taking time to listen. If you would like more information about our church or would like to make a comment, please mail us at info at newlifeag.in. God bless you.